Today we are reviewing two motherboards from ASRock. This is their X870 Steel Legend Wi-Fi and also the X870E Tai Chi Lite. Now, these boards, straight away we'll talk about the obvious elephant in the room when it comes to the 800 series boards, and that is with the X870 in particular, you're essentially getting in ways less than you would on, say, an X670. And by this, they were using two chipsets on the X670. On the X870, uh, they're only using a single chipset, and so it's more or less a B650E in a different clothing with the X870. So that's a little bit disappointing to see AMD do this with the naming schemes. But on the flip side, you do get guaranteed USB 4 on the rear of the board and implemented in the board with an extra chipset. That said, some 600 series boards already carry that feature. So in terms of the itty grease on the naming scheme and obviously the prices at least at launch with these boards being more expensive than the B650E counterparts, it does make the situation automatically look like that you're not getting really that good of a deal when it comes to X870 or X870E. Though that said, I do feel some sort of sympathy towards the motherboard manufacturers, especially in today's review with ASRock, where they've done a fantastic job on the board implementation itself. And so if you've come to today's review to look for the board and say, hey, does it check out in these boxes? Does it check everything I want it to do? Then hopefully at the end of this review, you will be impressed with what these boards have to offer, especially the Steel Legend, which I'm holding my hands because for a mid-range board, Coming in at 259 USD, it actually does something that I haven't seen X670 or X670E boards do in the mid-range. And that is the 6400 MHz, the elusive 6400 MHz 2133 Infinity Fabric U-Clock Mem Clock 1 to 1. And so this board just got up and boogied and did this, as does the X670E Tai Chi as well as the X870E Lite Tai Chi in today's review. And also this board, the mid-range board, does it. Now in the Aorus review tomorrow, for instance, their mid-range board doesn't do this, but their high-end board does. So that's something for people who are just looking for the best tinkering options available when it comes to memory, CPU tuning, and obviously motherboard tuning too. This board is going to offer that, which was actually great to see. However, keep in mind, getting this elusive setting still comes down to having the right 7000 or 9000 series Ryzen CPU, and of course, good memory that will do 6400 megahertz low latency timings. Now let's start going through this board piece by piece and then we'll move on to the Tai Chi Lite piece by piece. And here's where we go through the VRM testing for you guys. For this, I use the 7950X because it's the highest power consuming CPU on both 7000 and 9000 series X870 and X670 CPUs that I've tested so far. And this one doesn't disappoint in terms of running pretty hot and pretty hungry for power in terms of uh, consuming about 234 watts on the Steel Legend. That was the max power consumption we saw. And this 17 phase, so it's a 14 plus two plus one phase VRM, did a great job in a 25C ambient environment. Here we had a maximum temperature of 61 degrees. And then on the heatsink, 38 degrees. And then in the software that was reporting 62 degrees. So very well controlled, nothing to worry about here. I'm sure if you wanted to overclock the snot out of the 16 cores, you could do this on this motherboard absolutely fine and you'll still be running within range. Though of course, I find the 7950X and even the 9950X, they actually benefit a lot more from just undervolting and fine tuning the CPU as opposed to going even harder because I find they're just run out of the box really aggressively where they pass that efficient point in the curve. And so you're just throwing a lot more power for very little extra gains, if that makes any sense. But also in terms of connectivity on the Steel Legend, you've got the PCIe 5 X16 lane at the top. Then you've got below that an X16 lane, but it isn't Gen 5. But then you've got for the M.2 slots, you've got two down the bottom and one up the top. The two down the bottom are not Gen 5, but then the one at the top is a Gen 5 4x4. Testing out the speeds on this drive show that it does get up and boogie and gives you really good speeds if you're looking to get a Gen 5 NVMe M.2. And in terms of the heatsink performance itself, just running our AS SSD loop test here, we managed to get up to 61 degrees reported on the drive, which is still well within range. I'd say once you start getting around 90 degrees on both VRM and temperatures on SSDs, it is cause for concern. I don't like to be 
near 90 degrees, I like to stay under 80 degrees for most of my testing, especially for day-to-day -day operations. But quickly going over the rear of this motherboard, you've got Wi-Fi 7 with the antenna included. You've got your BIOS flashback button, so you've got future support here if you want to update for the next series of Ryzen CPUs, whether that's 10,000 or 11,000 series. That remains to be seen, but then below that we've got nine Type-A USB ports as well as two USB 4 slots, and then you've got a 2.5 gigabit NIC as well as your audio out and mic line in hybrid and an optical out too for audio. Now speaking of audio, we've got the Realtek ALC4082. So this is a new codec. It was at least the first time I've seen this implemented on a motherboard, and here's where the performance was at least very good in terms of the frequency response curve. But the roll off from 0 to 20 hertz, I have seen better numbers in the, in the past. So basically your sub bass is going to suffer a little bit on this implementation of the onboard audio. But the sound coming out is going to be very crisp, very clear, and it's also going to be very powerful. So this thing had a lot of power in my testing here. It's got a lot of room to amp up some really, I guess, even mid-range or going into the high-end cans because it absolutely made short work of my Audio Technica's that I use as my daily headphones. If I need to use headphones, I do prefer speakers, but the headphones, it just had so much power. I had to keep this thing at like a volume level of 20. So <laughs> it's got a lot of power in terms of the onboard audio, but in terms of the crosstalk, that was around minus 86 decibels. So I have seen better numbers on the crosstalk as well as the roll off. But in terms of the frequency response curve and the distortion, those numbers were pretty good. Now also speaking of onboard audio, we will segue this into the Tai Chi light here because the onboard audio performed very similar despite it having an ESS Sabre DAC on board, which when we look at the connectivity support here for the onboard audio, it goes up to 384 kilowatts, 32 bits. So these sort of codecs are just complete overkill, especially for someone like me. I use 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, because that's what's natively supported in most games, both on the line in port and the headphone out port, but I don't even use my line in port if I'm doing audio recordings. I'll use a separate solution that's got a dedicated 48 volt phantom power on it. Though another point that we're gonna segue and mix both these uh, motherboards together is the BIOS. And here is where we go to the X870 Steel Legend first. The BIOS here is great in terms of features, getting through it, having all the options you're gonna need in terms of tuning. I am very familiar with ASRock BIOSes personally as I use them on my test systems. And the support out of the box, I came into zero issues here. And also one thing I will say is that I've noticed in my testing here, I'm gonna talk about this in the Aorus review of the motherboards tomorrow, is that the Aorus motherboards have laggy BIOSes. That's what I realized. What is it that I don't like about the Aorus BIOS? And it's it's come a long way. Like it looks better and it's feature-wise, it's got everything I need, but it's just laggy. It's laggy. The ASRock BIOS is so much more snappier and faster and more responsive to use than the Aorus BIOS. So I do like what ASRock do with their BIOSes in terms of responsiveness, but also feature-wise, the text size, as well as the tuning for fans and things like that. It's got it all packed into it. You're gonna have no problems, except I will critique the Steel Legend here because they've sort of just inverted the BIOS to match the theme of the motherboard, which is this sort of off-white, gray-silver theme going on. And that's sort of like the BIOS was annoying to look at after a couple of minutes. I just prefer the dark mode BIOS on the Tai Chi Lite. So feature-wise, BIOS tuning-wise, they're very similar boards. It's just I do prefer the dark mode, so I'd like to see ASRock offer that on the Steel Legend instead. I mean, personal preference, maybe they could just have an option there to uninvert the BIOS. <laughs> I'd like to do that. Uh, so that's the only critiquing point, but in terms of the Tai Chi Lite, perfect BIOS, absolutely love it. Got all the features there and you can save profiles and do whatever you want in terms of tuning your 7800X 3D or 7950X or 9950X, etc. So now moving on to the Tai Chi Light here, the X870E. This is aesthetically, I'm gonna say straight off the bat, probably one of the most pleasing motherboards I have ever seen in my life. It's just got that simple, strong, like boxy look to it, but the heat sinks just have a nice pattern and a nice shine to it. I do really like the aesthetic of this board. I mean, maybe it's just me. Do let us know in the comments if you're digging this board or this Steel Legend, but I think ASRock have really stepped up their game this generation with the aesthetics. I just love the look of the Tai Chi light, plus the fact that you can pull off the sticker and it now becomes an X870E Tai Chi. Because <laughs> essentially that's what this is. The Tai Chi light is a Tai Chi 
just has a little bit less fluff. It doesn't have as many RGB lights on the board. Actually, I think the Tai Chi light in this particular case, I didn't notice any RGB on this board in particular. So what you're getting here is just the VRM, which is a 24 phase VRM, I believe, uh, 21 plus two plus one. And this is 110 amp stages. So this thing is complete. If you thought the Steel Legend was already too much, this thing is just going that step above and beyond. So it's for serious overclockers who say wanna use LN2 and just go for different solutions outside of water and air. And here's where we got the temperatures on the 7950X coming in here, using up around 235 watt direct draw from the walls around about 350 watts, going a little bit higher than the Steel Legend because it does have the dual chipsets on board. So that is gonna consume a little bit more power, especially when everything's loaded up. But here's where we saw 47 degrees on the uh, hottest point on the board versus 34 degrees on the heat sinks versus 41 reported in the software. So in other words, the hottest point that we could visibly see wasn't even the MOSFETs in this case, it was actually around the CPU area. That's how good the VRM is on the Tai Chi light. Now, in terms of the rear input and output of the board itself, you're looking at a little bit of a beefier rear I.O. here with a clear CMOS button as well as that BIOS flashback. You got the Wi-Fi 7, but then you've got 10 Type-A ports and two USB 4s, as well as a 5G Ethernet as opposed to 2.4G, uh, 2.5G. Now, I will critique 5G because I just feel it's in a really weird spot right now. I would personally either just go 10G or 2.5G is because you're mainly gonna be looking at switches. And the other day I actually went out and bought a 2.5G switch for a really good price. And so I think like a lot of people will be upgrading to 2.5G because you're just gonna get all those extra speeds and it's really a great economic upgrade. But then 5G is like, you've gotta get the 5G switch, which I don't really see any available. And it's like, well, you might as well just go for 10G if that's the case. So I would have kind of liked to have just seen 10G on the back, especially when you are paying and this board does cost 399 USD, but it's actually, I think you get a $20 rebate if you're in the US right now, so it makes it 379. However, this board features two Gen 5 X16 slots, three Gen 4x4 M.2 slots, and one Gen 5x4 M.2 slot. And in terms of testing out the speeds on that drive, absolutely fine, like the Steel Legend, really fast speeds. The heatsink did score one degree cooler than the Steel Legend, so it's a little bit beefier, but the contact is really good here, as we'll see in tomorrow's video when I, I include the Aorus results here. This heat sink is a little bit lighter, but it's performing better. And so I put that down to the heat pads they're using are really efficient, and the heat sink is getting quite warm. So it is soaking up the heat and doing a great job, very efficiently, very quickly. But the final things to go over with this Tai Chi Light is it is a heavier board, and it's EATX, so you will have to have a case that supports extended ATX in this case. And that just means it's uh, the board is wider than say a standard ATX motherboard, which is Steel Legend, that's just your standard ATX board. So this is actually EATX, like, it's kind of like, it's a weird format. I'd say it's like EATX light, just like the Tai Chi light. Uh, it's a little bit extended, but you do have to keep that in mind when you're buying a case, because you have to make sure that's not cutting off where it would normally be for ATX motherboards. Also, you do get more fan ports on the Tai Chi Lite versus the Steel Legend. You do get the BIOS readout code, power and reset buttons up the top, which is handy if you wanna have an open air system and you're chopping and changing parts. I uh, actually shouldn't say chopping. I don't think you'd wanna chop up any of your PC parts. And unless of course you're on a budget and you're making a janky PC, then you might wanna think about chopping up parts. Yeah, with all those numbers done, it's time to give you guys a straight clean cut conclusion with both these motherboards and what do I think of them? Who are they for? And straight away, I'm going to say the 800 series boards, at least the X670 Steel Legend and the X870E uh, Tai Chi Lite, these boards are gonna be for someone who just wants to build a PC, don't have to update the BIOS. Maybe you don't know how to update the BIOS and you wanna get a Ryzen 9000 series CPU and you just wanna have everything that works straight out of the box without having to bother like, with things like BIOS flashbacks and other things like that. So there is that ease of use. The problem is the value for the feature set, a B650E is going to be a better buy in terms of just raw value. But at least if you're going for something like the aesthetic of the Steel Legend or the aesthetic of the Tai Chi Lite, and as Rocks have done a really good job there, plus that performance of knowing that the motherboard is not holding you back, if you wanna eke out a little extra performance 
out of your CPU. Though do keep in mind, the best performance I've seen so far with AMD chips and motherboards has actually been on mini ITX boards. I will endeavor to make a follow-up video on this and do more thorough testing, but just out of my benchmark testing of recent videos and checking out an AliExpress mini ITX board, I noticed that the, the mini ITX board scored the best numbers in the Cyberpunk 2077 CPU benchmark that we do with the RTX 4090. It's not a huge difference, but is something worth noting. Though to uncomplicate things for you guys, Steel Legend, my pick by far this time around over the Tai Chi Lite. Even though I really like the B650E Tai Chi Lite, that was probably one of my favorite boards in the 600 series. The X870 Steel Legend is getting the win in today's video in comparison between these two boards. I just feel like there was no compromises made and it was coming in at least in a mid-range field here, even though $250 <laughs> used to be your kind of more your high-end boards. It's coming in your mid-range field nowadays, but it's still giving out a lot of high-end features. But then if you wanna go for just crazy VRM and all the highest of high-end features that a motherboard can offer, in terms of having that ESS Sabre DAC on board, then the Tai Chi Lite is definitely gonna deliver there. And it's also got a lot more metal on it in the form of heat sinks. And you've got also the uh, extra connectivity on board in terms of PCI Express, as well as some extras on the back in terms of an extra type A port, as well as extra connectivity on the front IO and some extra fan ports, things like that. So you've just got those extra features if you need them, if that's what you want then the Tai Chi Lite is gonna cost more though, over $100 more, and is that gonna be worth it for you? Well, as always with consumer tech on PC, it's always up to what is the best choice for you. Though for me personally, if I was looking to build a new PC and I wanted the least amount of hassles, I'd probably go for the Steel Legend X870. It's a really nice board, not just aesthetically, but performance wise, and hopefully this one has helped you guys out. Anyhow, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying the Tech yes content, you may wish to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops. And with that aside, also let us know in the comment section below what you think about the 800 series boards, at least the two motherboards we featured in today's video. And I'll see you in the next one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.